Hi, I'm Cassie Joy of Fed and Fit. Today we're back in the kitchen making one of the hottest trends in food right now, yogurt toast. Today we have broken down yogurt toast. We made it as simple and as delicious as possible. And we've also tested it with two different fillings, a sweet and a savory. Actually, it's sweet and savory. <laughs> we've tested nine different toppings. It's going to be delicious. And we're also gonna show you how to make it two different ways. I have it here in the air fryer. That's our favorite way because it's really quick, but if you don't have an air fryer or you don't have one handy, we're also gonna show you how to do it in the oven. Let's get started. First, I'm gonna show you the two different fillings, the sweet and the savory. Now, I'll be honest, my favorite, my personal favorite is sweet, but the team is really into the savory, and so we're gonna dig into both. The first ingredient, and probably the most important, is going to be yogurt. So the base of our yogurt toast is yogurt, and we have decided that the best kind of yogurt toast has a custard finish to it. It's nice and thick and creamy. And what we found is that Greek yogurt, full fat Greek yogurt, our favorite is Stonyfield, always and forever, um, is going to give you that best result. But of course, we're fed and fit, so we've tested other yogurts. Dairy-free coconut yogurt works. I just wouldn't recommend using a traditional, more thin, liquidy yogurt. I also added a tablespoon of maple syrup to this option a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest. Now this is, I, <laughs> Melissa uh, on the team, she actually put in the majority of the legwork to test all these out, and she is like, you cannot skip the lemon zest. We're not skipping it, but I will say that if that's not something that you have the extra step for or the microplane, I think that you can probably leave it out and get the same texture and same results, but it does add really great flavor. And then the key here, so yogurt toast usually sets under heat in the oven in the air fryer because of an egg that you've mixed in with it. But what we've discovered is that the egg was good, but an egg yolk alone is better. Going right in. So one egg yolk for each batch, okay? And we'll talk about how much a batch makes in a second. And then just whisk all of these yummy ingredients together until they're nice and smooth. All right, now onto the savory half a cup for both of these recipes for a batch of yogurt toast, yummy, yummy yogurt toast. And we're gonna put in a teaspoon of garlic powder for this savory one, and then that's it, just those three ingredients. And I'm just going to stir it up with this little spatula until it's nice and evenly mixed. The steps are make your filling, prep the bread, pour in the filling, <laughs> Bake it, or add whatever toppings you might want to add before you bake it. Bake it, finish it off, and enjoy. Okay, let's prep the bread. The first toast I'm going to demonstrate for you is the gluten-free toast. I think any of them are probably going to behave pretty much exactly the same. So what you need to do is you need to get a spoon. I'm going to use this for the yogurt. We have a little serrated spoon. This is great for de-seeding jalapenos eating grapefruits <laughs> and the like. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press down on the toast to make as much of an indentation in the middle as I possibly can. So I just wanna flatten that really soft part of the bread. And that will create a well for the yogurt to go in later. So it's nice and squished and flat in the middle, that's what we want. And now I'm just gonna take a few spoonfuls of our filling, this is our sweet filling, and spoon it right on top of the toast. This one batch of the sweet filling will make, and the savory, will make approximately eight pieces of toast if you're using a gluten-free bread similar to this one. And I'll tell you the amounts of the other ones in a little bit. So about two spoonfuls, just to fill out that little well. And I'm gonna top this one with raspberries. The little raspberries just go right on top, just like that. Okay, these are assembled and ready. I'm gonna put on my 1980s dad glasses so I can actually read the air fryer. The Kasori is our favorite air fryer to use in the studio. So I'm just gonna press the power button and we are going to preheat it. I'm going to preheat it to 350. Once that's done preheating, this will shut down. I'll pull out the little base, put the toast right inside, put it in, and then cook it at 350 for five minutes. And then it's Perfect. The next bread we're testing is a nice flushy, fluffy, flushy, fluffy brioche. <laughs> I'm gonna use the same spoon method and just press down and create a nice little well 
here in the toast. Brioche is a little bit larger, and so your bat or this loaf is, so the batch is gonna probably get you anywhere between four and six pieces versus eight of the gluten-free. Press it on down just like that, and we are going to top this one when it comes out of the air fryer with a blackberry jam and some fresh thyme. It is a really beautiful flavor combination. And we just found that adding the jam after it comes out has a little bit of a better flavor and texture. I think you're gonna like it more. You could definitely put it on and then bake it. That's up to you, choose your own adventure. There we go. Perfect bread, nice indentation. And now we're just gonna fill it with the yogurt. Now this is actually all we're gonna do to this toast because when it comes out of the air fryer, I'm gonna to top it with a blackberry jam, this delicious blackberry jam, and some fresh thyme. Okay, the raspberry gluten-free toast is done. I'm pulling it out. Best to use a spatula. So again, you don't reach down into that hot basket. Beautiful. We will finish garnishing those in a second, but let's go ahead and put our brioche bread in. It's already preheated, so no need to preheat. In they go. And then another five minutes at 350. And then I like to top with just a little fresh dusting of lemon zest to really send that lemon raspberry flavor home. These are ready. And remember, if you don't have the air fryer or you don't want to use your air fryer for whatever reason, you can make this toast in the oven. We recommend 350 degrees for 12 minutes. We've tested lots of options and varieties, and we think that some of them get a little too crispy. This is just the right amount of time, no matter what toast you're using. Okay, so the next toast we're gonna make is actually with our savory base, and we're using a croissant. I know, when we thought of this, we like high-fived ourselves. <laughs> we thought, that, what a great application. So this croissant is just an average store-bought croissant. The next time you're out picking up coffee, just grab a croissant. They're great the next day for this application. So we cut it really loosely down the middle. Try not to squish it as you're cutting it because these air pockets, that's where we're not gonna press this one in. We're gonna leave it nice and fluffy. And that is actually is what's gonna hold this yogurt filling. So this is one of the two toasts we're making today that uses our savory filling. So I'm gonna add a couple spoonfuls right on top and just spread it around and press it down with the back of my spoon and that pushes it into those little holes and those little crevices. Same for both sides. What a meal. And then to the top of this one, I want you to take a couple pieces of ham. This is a ham and cheese croissant. Take a couple pieces of ham and chop them up into nice little bitty pieces. That way you don't have to worry about cutting it as you're enjoying your yogurt toast. The ham goes right on top of the yogurt. A good few generous pinches. This is a couple pieces of ham. Sliced, I bet, I bet on about a one or a two. And then some cheddar cheese, shredded cheddar cheese goes right on top after that. A pretty generous sprinkling, but remember that the bigger, the thicker the topping that you put on this, the longer it's going to need to stay in the air fryer or in the oven to cook through. So this, when it comes to a croissant, uh, it might be a little less is more situation. This will go in the air fryer also at 350 for five minutes. I'm gonna actually probably bump it up because this one's a little thick to about six minutes. Same for in the oven. And while we're still waiting on that other one to come out of the air fryer, I would love to know, could you comment below, what is another food trend that you have seen that you want the Fed and Fit team to take on? Because you know, when we, keep, when we sink our teeth into a food trend, we test it. We actually see what's out there, what are the most popular recipes, we see how good they are, and then we think how we can improve upon them, make it even easier and tastier for you. So comment below, let us know what food trend you want us to take on next. Okay, our brioche bread is done. Again, using my spatula to pull it out of the air fryer basket. <gasps> Look how toasted and beautiful that is. You know, when it comes to yogurt toast, that's another thing that we figured out, is that it's best warm. It's best to eat it when it's fresh. 
Now you can definitely eat yogurt toast that's been sitting around. Goodness knows we've done lots of that around here in the kitchen the last couple of weeks, but we really think you're gonna have the best, most custard, creamy-like experience if you eat it when it's fresh. Okay, so for the blackberry jam, I'm just gonna take about a tablespoon of jam and dollop it right on top of each one. And then using the back of my spoon, just spread it out. Kind of how you would jam on your toast. Just like that. And then we're going to take this fresh thyme and I'm just gonna run my fingers along the stem in the opposite direction that it grows. That's how you release little thyme pieces. And give it a little bitty sprig, sprinkle on each one. Beautiful. Croissant toast is going into the air fryer basket, which is preheated already, of course. And then I'm gonna cook it 350 degrees for six minutes just to give it a little bit longer. All right, so the fourth toast we're making is on fluffy homemade sourdough. Isn't that beautiful? Melissa on Team Fed and Fit makes this herself. We're the luckiest. Okay, so we are going to, again, with the back of our little spoon, I'm using that serrated spoon to help give us a nice little edge around the crust, but I'm gonna go ahead and start poking all around the edge of this toast. And when we're ready, I'm going to fill this. This is a pretty large piece of bread, and so decided only to do one piece. This seems like a good serving size, a pretty generous serving. I'm gonna go ahead and indent this. And again, just like the croissant, it's got those little nice air bubbles that form, and you'll be able to spoon some of the filling in that as well. So we have our savory yogurt filling, which again is just the yogurt and the egg yolk and the garlic powder and then give a couple big spoonfuls. Just like that. And then this is how I'm going to go ahead and cook this very plainly. And then when it comes out, we're going to garnish it with a soft boiled egg, a jammy egg. Those are the best. And if you're not sure how to cook a perfect jammy egg, we have a tutorial for you on fedandfit.com. But the cheat sheet is, on a rolling boil, so that means bubbling in the water, and you're gonna put them in there for exactly six minutes, and then when you pull them out, put them in an ice bath, which just means it's a bowl with water and ice, and the egg goes in until it's nice and chilled, and they peel faster that way when you ice bath after you boil. Some capers and some dill, and this would also be a really nice one to put some smoked salmon on, or even prosciutto, It'd be delicious. Let's pull our croissant toast out, oh! Oh, it looks so good, beautiful. And then we're just going to top this with some fresh green onion and it's good to go, dig in. Now it's time to put our sourdough yogurt toast into the air fryer, just like all the other ones, no difference, 350 for five minutes. Alrighty, our sourdough toast is ready. Ooh, it's a little toasty. On the outside, it looks beautiful. Look at that. Oh, okay. It's the best part. We get to decorate it. Okay, so we've got these soft boiled eggs. I just have a nice sharp knife. Run it right through the middle. Beautiful. Nice jammy eggs. I'm going to fit three of them on this piece of toast. Just seems like the right number. And then a few capers, little pickled capers. I love these. Okay, and then I'm gonna put some fresh dill over the top. And then just a little finishing drizzle of olive oil. And a pinch of flaky sea salt. And it's done.